Hello folks, my name is Fred, welcome to my shop. It's January 6th, 2018 in upstate New York, the weather is cold. It's 2 degrees Fahrenheit or about minus 17 Celsius. Good day to be in the shop. Today I want to share with you my newest stationary engine. Now I teased this project in my last engine video by showing the cylinders. And these were the cylinders at the time. The bore is one and three quarter inches and the stroke is four inches. It's a double acting engine in that the piston is pushed both ways by reciprocating entrance of, of air, in this case compressed air. And like all my engines, this one's scratch built. There's no plans. The cylinders, the cylinder base, and the flywheel uh, supports were cast in my foundry. Nothing special foundry, it's just a little aluminum foundry that I built a couple of years ago. This is the pattern for the base. It's got the curve for the cylinder. It was cast up. This is the pattern for the, the flywheel support. You can see that it's got draft on it. It's, it's thicker at this end and thinner at this end. And it sits in the mold like this. Sorry. It sits in the mold like this. So when you pull, pull the pattern out of the mold, it comes out without bringing a lot of sand with it. I did this last last winter when it was kind of cold and I learned a lot from it. One of the things is when it's cold you got to use a bigger sprue. This is where the aluminum gets poured down into because the Petrobond is cold and it'll it'll cool before it gets time to get down and fill up the void here. And if you can see right here there's a, there's a void. Uh, the aluminum solidified before it got to fill this. I, tr I tried some JB Weld on this. It worked relatively well, but I wanted to cast it. I wanted to do the whole thing right. So my second attempt was this. A much larger sprue, more volume, wider, so it would cool slower. And this one actually came out pretty good. There's, there's no voids here. Uh, this is an extra that I cast up. I always cast up one or two more than I really need for a project in case I mess up during the machining process. But uh, that didn't happen this time, thank goodness. I can recycle these and make another engine. So, uh, this one has an 8 inch stainless steel flywheel. I pulled it out of a, a, the recycle, aluminum and metal recycle uh, building at our local uh, recycle center. It's where I get a, a lot of my brass and a lot of my aluminum. Machining this guy was, was pretty challenging because it would work harden very quickly and it would leave a terrible surface. So I worked on this flywheel quite a long time to get it even that shiny. It's running really, really true and I'm, I'm happy with that. For all you hardcore steamers out there, the unique thing about this engine and, the, and the, what, why I built it is I wanted to try to build an engine that had no cross slide. And I'm sure you folks that deal with steam engines know what a cross slide is. It supports the connecting rod on this end and gives reference to the connecting rod. The other end of the connecting rod, of course, is connected to the, the piston. So with a, with a cross slide, it can go back and forth very regularly. I decided on this one to have the connecting rod go all the way through the engine. This is based loosely on the snow engine, the 650 horsepower engine uh, that's in Cool Spring, Pennsylvania. I got a video on my channel if you, if you want to take a look at that. It's awesome. 18 foot flywheel. Totally awesome. I go there every year just as a pilgrimage, just to see it. So this this uh, connecting rod goes through the entire engine and gives support to the piston on both ends and 
in reference to this. Uh, currently this is running on about five pounds of air. It's still breaking in. It's, it's really tight. Uh, the valving on this engine, there's a manifold here. Air comes in, shop air. Right now it's running on five pounds. Comes up here. Uh, comes up into the spool valve. The spool valve is repositioned and timed by eccentrics here on the crankshaft. They can be adjusted here for timing and position within the cross, cross uh, the valve body. It, so consequently it has no steam chest. And if you do research you'll find that spool valves are more efficient and waste less horsepower than uh, cross slides or than uh, uh, steam chests do. This one took about 300 hours to make, a little over a year in the shop, and uh, I'd say probably 50% of the time was invested in just planning. How big do I want something? Sizing, uh, how to overcome problems, how to align items. It was it was a lot of fun. It's a good runner. Like I say, it's still breaking in. We'll run it a little faster. Right now it's on five pounds of air. That's 10 pounds of air. That's 20 pounds of air. I'll show you. No, well, actually it's 15. Go back it down. Well, my compressor can keep up. We're down to around five again. Uh, I'll be showing this in this engine and a few of my other engines this this summer at uh, various steam shows. There's one in Marion, New York, Canandaigua, and Alexander, New York, in the fall. Uh, if you want to see them in person, those shows are great shows. There's there's tons of wonderful engines and wonderful informative fellas there that love to share their their expertise and their knowledge but if you can't go to the show uh, feel free to browse my channel for other videos on this kind of scratch build engine all my engines are one of a kind they're all different well that, that I guess is it for today uh, from here Please subscribe if you like these kind of videos. Uh, I'll be actually making another video hopefully tomorrow when, when I get this project finished. But my, like I said in another video, my grandson and I are made a can crusher. Let's see if I can pan over to it. It's right there. Come on, it's a can crusher. I gotta put a few safety items on it. Another handle, so both hands are nowhere near the crusher when he's using it but it'll be under supervision so uh, as always thanks for stopping by thanks for watching and have a great day